All right, welcome back to the second installment of the Social Made Simple show. I am your host and MC, Ryan Chasen, and we are joined today by none other than the Chief Operating Officer of Social Made Simple, Corey Cotnoir. Corey, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Ryan. Um, so to jump right into it, I know that we had gone over um, in our last episode, uh, David's background coming from the mortgage world, um, but I think that's a great place to start uh, to get your background on, you know, your work experience and, and how Social Made Simple came to be. Sure. Yeah. So I graduated from St. Anselm College in Manchester, New Hampshire, a small liberal arts school. Uh, I graduated with a, a Bachelor of Arts in Business there. Wasn't totally sure when I was in school what I wanted to do yet. Um, went there to play hockey and was a little bit short-sighted as most athletes tend to be. Um, after graduating, just kind of looked around and I knew I had an interest in, in business, generally speaking, especially in the digital space. So um, I tried my hand at really helping a lot of other business owners that I had from family contacts and networking, um, really kind of started my own little freelance business um, right after graduation where primarily worked in web design and um, you know, kind of got my own feet wet in the advertising space that way, which was a great, uh, a great learning tool for me, whereas I know a lot of people tend to jump into an entry level job and, and they're, um, you know, kind of restricted in what they can learn. And this was good because it had me learn on the fly um, pretty rapidly. Simultaneously, I was uh, practicing real estate. So I got my real estate license. Um, I helped our, our office in real estate marketing. But also, I just had a passion in, in uh, the real estate industry, and um, maybe we'll get into that a, a bit later as it's, it's I, I think I know David talked about his, his history. Um, weirdly enough, our business has a lot of ties to the real estate space, so um, that mm -hmm. was a nice, easy segue for me. So um, I joined SMS in, I think it was December or November 2014, um, so over five years that I've been here, uh, I've had a variety of different roles in the business, um, really started kind of at the ground level and, and had, had jobs that were, um, you know, at, at this business that helped me to understand what goes into how we fulfill for our customers, um, whether that's producing content and the actual deliverables we provide our customers, um, or, you know, after that transitioning into the product end of things, which I had a, a desire and a passion for. Um, and then over the last few years now, helping oversee the operations and uh, kind of what goes into the day to day. Where I think a lot of people that would be in a position I'm in right now would tend to have less of uh, an eye on how you know our team uses what we use on a day to day basis. Um, I'm fortunate enough to not be that removed from needing to use it that way. Um, I would say our platform, the easiest way to summarize it would be uh, it serves two purposes, and it's pretty unique in this nature. Um, it is our customer-facing experience, first and foremost. So every, every customer we have, um, the way they consume Social Made Simple's products and services is through the platform we've built for them. Um, that's not all that unique. That's what most you know, software businesses have their platforms for. Um, we'll get into that in a little bit, too, where I think that that provides us a nice value add and a unique fit in the marketplace. Um, mm -hmm. But most importantly, something that is more more unique in this space is uh, how we enable our internal teams um, through the same platform to provide our services. So, uh, you know, when we're selling our programs and we're communicating with customers, we don't get into these details. They don't care, um, point blank. But what they don't realize, and that's because we've done a good job of hiding that, is that our, we're able to provide the prices we provide and um, the quality of services we provide really because of the team we have and because of the platform we've built. So um, th to get more specifically, you know, the, the platform allows our team to produce content at scale, to save those, con th those pieces of content across libraries, um, to, to build brand libraries, to serve, you know, the, the big brands we work with um, efficiently and effectively to manage everything we do to manage our ad campaigns, uh, the reporting of our customers, the, it's basically our internal CRM for our management where most businesses would be uh, running all over the place with a variety of different softwares or paying crazy amounts of money for a CRM. Um, it's, it's really everything we do. It's the lifeblood of our business. And uh, that dual purpose is what I, I think is most fascinating about it. Yeah, absolutely. And I know that you had started to touch upon, um, you know, just some of the programs that we fulfill. Um, for the folks that aren't familiar just with Social Made Simple uh, as a whole, um, you know, we're, we really range from, you know, 
taking on single location small business to you know being a solution for you know franchise and multi location businesses as well as partnerships with being the more of a back end social marketing solution um, and I know that you know and I know it just being in the in the sales cycle and, and the business development process um, that you know we offer a lot of customization in our programs so I think um, if you could touch upon that, I think that would be a great thing. Sure. Yeah, it's a it's a pretty vast question to answer simply. So I'll do my best. Um, I think the simplest way to answer it is we try to offer everything social. So I hope that you know, and you would know as you said, Ryan, if a customer comes to us and says they need something, I hope on the surface we already offer it. And if for some reason we do not, uh, it shouldn't be hard for us to provide it. So that's the core piece of this is that we are a social media marketing business and our intent is to uh, span the entire social media landscape and provide you know, an end-to-end -end solution for our customers there. Um, like you said, we serve, I think the easiest way to break that out is three different customer segments, which would be small and medium-sized businesses, multi-location franchise brands, and then partnerships um, where we're really strategic and good at white labeling and partnering with big brands. Um, but to return to the programs, I think the, the best way to simplify what is the core of what Social Made Simple does, um, I often break it into two pieces to simplify it, which would be content and ads. Um, those have a lot of that, that branch out underneath that, but um, really the simplest way to describe that would be content, would be our team creating from scratch the content that our customers uh, then experience that we publish on their behalf, that we work with them to produce that would be their posts that go out to their social networks, um, as well as the content that we can transition into ad campaigns, the boosted posts. Um, mm -hmm. We'll go as far as you know, going across different platforms, even blogging, email. So it's all based around our team's uh, ability to, to write really professional content that drives results. The second part would be ads. So um, the, the important distinction here is these are strategic, these are result-focused ad campaigns. Um, it's not as much about the branding element like like the content is. Um, it's more for down the funnel. It's for saying, you know, I, I want to spend my money in uh, a way that I can generate leads and I can track and measure sales and I can uh, get purchases from my my e-commerce website. Um, it's those. It's, it's the intent there for our team is to show the business that we're getting them results that they're paying for and we don't shy away from it. Um, mm -hmm. And that's in a way, you know, a bit segmented. There's plenty of gray areas still between the two. Uh, but that's the easiest way, I think, to describe what we do um, in a nutshell. Everything social and the easiest way to look at that would be through the lens of content and advertising. If you asked a lot of the businesses and a lot of people in the position I'm in el elsewhere, uh, there'd probably be a ton of cookie cutter answers. Um, so I'll do my best to avoid that, of course. I, I think the key is uh, we're affordable. And uh, again, that can feel cookie cutter. Um, but I think the big distinction is that we're affordable because we've invested in our software to be affordable. We're not affordable just because I say we are, or we say we are. Um, our pricing and what we provide for that price, um, we've had 10 years to build up to where we are. Um, it's not like we just hired a team of people and said, okay, this customer wants content and ads, just go do it for them and figure it out. Um, that's going to leave you operationally in a place that you can't afford to scale that you can't provide good services while also making enough money to do that as a business. So we prioritize that um, efficiency behind the scenes, that scalability behind the scenes, um, which leads us to a place that we rival, you know, some of our, our biggest competitors in the space tend to be softwares. Um, and the reason for that is because our price point, you know, if you go find an agency to provide you the same services you get from us, you're going to be paying them five, 10 times more than you're paying us to do that same level of service. So it, it can be really misleading when you look at pricing on websites and you look at, you know, we give you posts, we give you ads. Um, you might go elsewhere and see the same bullet points and see similar price points, but the mm -hmm. key is what's actually happening behind the scenes and what you're getting um, within those. And, and I think that's what separates us more than anything else um, from our competitors. Um, just in terms of you know, as, as time goes on and as we expand, um, you know, into the different verticals and different customer accounts that we're fulfilling, how do you feel like um, Social Made Simple will have to adapt just in, in that regard? 
Sure. Yeah, it's, it's a good question. It's my job, obviously, to make sure that if we grow <laughs> and as we grow, uh, that, you know, the whole ship doesn't sink because it's too hard to figure that out. And that's where a lot of businesses do end up failing is um, they're not able to solve a scalable model. And uh, what might work for a few customers when you launch doesn't really work when you've got 20, 30, 40 um, knocking on your door. So for us, I think the key here is uh, software. So I touched on it earlier. Um, and again, it's, it's, we're taking a more of an operational lens right now than the one the customer sees and feels. Um, but yep. the software that our team uses to do everything they do on a day-to-day -day basis um, is the key. So how can we enable the, the team of experts that we staff, the people that we have growing into new roles on a day-to-day -day basis um, to be better at their job and to take on new accounts? And that's always going to be done through better use of software. Um, there are times, as you know, Ryan, we, we will go find uh, third-party solutions that help us get by in certain areas, whether that's sales, um, sales solutions and sales CRMs. Uh, but what needs to scale most importantly is the way that we provide those affordable yet effective uh, solutions to our customers. And that will be 100% done through uh, the software that we use. Um, I think I, I feel very confident in where we are. I think if we um, continue on the path we're headed, uh, as you know, we're, we're experiencing pretty quick growth here. Um, I don't see any reason you know, why that's going to slow. And I don't have any concern in our ability to continue scaling with the, the foundations we've built, um, especially from a, a software and a personnel perspective. Tricky question, because I think if you asked me uh, maybe a year ago, I think my answer would be significantly different. Um, I think right now, and I, I would say I'd be careful in answering this too assuredly, because uh, today's marketplace seems so rapidly different from, it, it, from what it was a year ago. Um, I can say with fair certainty that where we are and where we will likely continue to head would be in a place that emphasizes advertising. Um, and, and what I mean by that is paid advertising, um, more importantly. As uh, many people that are probably watching this would know, social media five years ago was not as much a, a paid uh, advertising place. It still had that and was still a core component of it, of course. It's how these brands make money. Um, but you could get by by just simply, you know, uh, growing an audience and, and really leaning pretty heavily into organic content. Um, and you could earn your, your, your branding and earn your engagement. Um, that's just really difficult to borderline impossible for 99% of businesses nowadays. The few that are big, the few that have created a community and a really big brand around what they do, they have that. Um, but for your average small business or medium sized business and even on up to franchise brands, it's really difficult to expect to just log into a social platform and, and begin engaging with your customers without paying a dollar. So I don't see that going anywhere. Um, if anything, I see it getting more and more competitive and more robust. Um, and so I think for us, it's important that we're able to provide those businesses, especially like I say, the ones who don't have the, the luxury of being able to leverage organic um, and put them in a place to compete with those brands and say, let's, let's show you how to bid properly. Let's show you how to advertise. Um, competitively on these different networks, what strategies you need to implement um, so that you can get in front of the right people, you can produce business results on social platforms. Um, the other piece, like I say, though, is it feels like we are experiencing um, pretty quick change and, and uh, pretty difficult to predict change, too. A lot of these platforms are under fire for data use. Um, as you know, uh, that's constant. We're constantly monitoring that. Um, there's a lot of, you know, politics wrapped up in, in what's going on on the social platforms. So um, mm -hmm. it's really hard to say with, with total certainty whether these are going to impact, you know, further government restrictions on uh, how businesses and people can interact on social platforms. But uh, if everything stays course, I would say it's, it's entirely ads. That's the future of uh, social for businesses. Um, it's, they have to be ready to pay in, in order to get in front of the audiences. Yeah. Yeah. And to, to kind of touch upon that, I mean, I think it was probably in 2017 was the first time I saw studies come out saying that companies were starting to spend more money on social advertising than traditional, traditional markets. Right. So it's been, it's been crazy to see uh, just the growth overall and just even our growth after I've only been with the company for a little over a year now, which is right. so crazy to me. Um, but to kind of wrap up and tie into our last question, where do you see Social Made Simple, uh, you know, five to 10 years from now? Yeah, so I think 
uh, it's building off what I was just talking about, which would be, um, you know, paid advertising, how we can uh, empower businesses that don't typically have access to this, this type of toolkit, to the, the, the big data they need to properly advertise and compete with those big spenders. How can we empower them to do that? And for me, the answer is, uh, again, in software, but in this case, it's more specifically in software and marketing automation. Um, we have a ton of tools. We have just listed dot social, as you know, Ryan, that um, it is specifically for the real estate space that already does this, that empowers real estate agents to just press a button and basically create an ad campaign that's built to work because we've tested it. We have our own data sets um, and we get them leads right from the, the push of a button. So I would say it's taking that automation, taking the power of our software toolkit um, to all of the businesses we intend to serve to those businesses that cannot do this effectively. They don't have the time. They don't have the monetary resources. They, they don't have the experience, the expertise, whatever the reason may be. Um, rather than us just say, you know, we'll hold your hand, trust us to get it done. Uh, also turning over software to them to say, use this and, and, uh, and, and it will do what you need to do and it will do it affordably and it will do it at scale. So I think five to 10 years from now, I'd love it if we had, um, you know, a, a far more uh, comprehensive and robust um, uh, marketing automation uh, ecosystem that we could basically turn over to all different verticals across across the the business world. Yeah, no, I think it's I think it's going to be interesting to see just as you know we grow and develop as a company to see those things uh, come to light. Yeah. So um, I think that is all the questions that we have for today, Corey. Thanks again for joining us. Uh, for everyone else, uh, you know, feel free to go on to socialmadesimple.com to check out. Uh, you know, all of our resources and the different programs that we offer in, in the social marketing world. Uh, but till then, we'll see you next time.